what's one hilarious culture sh- shock? Sorry, I mean, I'm a worried girl. <laughs> hilarious culture culture shock. shock. <laughs> culture. <laughs> so, uh, you, you see shocky pants that like, you never forget time in the UK with mm-hmm. just 100 pants for a month. Mm-hmm. How would you do it? <laughs> I, I said I did that when I first awoke. I regret. Yeah. I think I will still tell myself like the way you came so determined and yeah. so positive. Like I came to this country with so I much finished class that day and I got home, I called my mom. I was like, Mommy, I don't think I can do it. Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time meeting this video, thank you so much. If you are a returning subscriber and returning viewer, thank you so much. My name is Ella and on this channel. I get to share a lot of things about living in the UK. And today, <laughs> I have a very special guest of honor with me, my dear friend, Chimie, who just finished from the University of Wolverhampton with a distinction, MSc hey. distinction. So, <laughs> welcome, Chimie. Thank you. So good Super to glad you. to be here. I know. It's so good to have you on my channel. If you, if you check my comments, Timmy is like my number one supporter, <laughs> always commenting on everything. When I say, well, right, would you like to get on? She said, yes. So, <laughs> If you're always commenting on my video, watch out. I may actually get you on these videos one of these days. But today it's all about Timmy. So Timmy, can we meet you? All right. Hi everybody. Hi. My name is Timmy. Um, I just rounded up my masters at the University of Wolverhampton. I studied artificial intelligence and to God be the glory. I got a distinction. I graduated with a distinction. Yeah, and while I was in school, I was the or I'm still the vice president of the British Computer Society at my uni. Um, it's not money. <laughs> <laughs> I was I am an open open bright scholar and I am currently an ambassador for a women in tech community called Rewriting the Code. Yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I'm a Christian and I love the she's Lord. A, she's, she's an ambassador <laughs> for Christ. But yeah, um, I just love how you shared your story there and just basically how it has been for you, you know, coming into this uni mm-hmm. and all of the things that you do, right? So um, I just wanted you to just, you know, walk me through, walk us through from scratch um, your journey so far as, yeah. you know, as a student and also getting to point of getting a distinction. All right. Um, so I knew I was very intentional about picking the course I came to study. Mm-hmm. Um, I studied chemical engineering for my first degree and I did engineering for a little while and I realized mm, it was this for me. Not engineering. <laughs> so yeah, not engineering. <laughs> so I had to do a little research, did a bit of self um, retrospection, and I realized, okay, I think I want to break into the tech industry. Yeah. And I felt, what's the better way than to just go back to school and study a course mm-hmm. in computing? Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, like, I resumed, and my first day in class, yeah, I finished class that day, and I got home. I called my mom. I was like, "Mommy, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> it's better for me to just give up." Don't now when it's still very early very on early about me, sure. <laughs> yes. but you know what she just encouraged me and i one thing i will say has really helped me so far is community mm-hmm. i got to meet like a lot of people where you know would help each other with school will mm-hmm. study together mm-hmm. will read together mm-hmm. and that has just really been you know what has helped me so far mm-hmm. so i'll say one of the significant things that i ensured that i did or has helped me is yeah. community yeah yeah and that that <laughs> hello <laughs> thank you and that is just perfect and it just really makes a lot of sense because a lot of people come to this country mm-hmm. as an immigrant study masters even people you know more advanced people that have years of experience mm-hmm. in nigeria or mm-hmm. any other country and they're like as i'm coming here i don't want to do it anybody because <laughs> nigerians can f you up yeah. nigerians can show you shaggy in this country yeah. i want to just do my own thing be on, my own, be on my own lane <laughs> i don't want anybody to know me yeah. but you can't do like that because community help even people that even have kids will tell you oh it's somebody that they drop their child exactly no, just different things right exactly. it's just really all about finding the right people yes. so you don't get effed up yes, <laughs> yes. it is anything like that but thank you so much for sharing so that. so now to my first question i'm starting from the difficult questions what was your lowest moment as an immigrant student and how did you bounce back? Ah. Huh? <laughs> Turn again. No. <laughs> Don't worry, you're next in line. I will get you and I will film you. <laughs> what was your lowest moment as an immigrant student and how did you bounce back? Ooh, okay. So I would say that there was a time I had worked really hard on an assignment mm-hmm. and I got my resolve back and it wasn't what I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember like I reached out to the lecturer and I was like, oh my God, please. I feel like I deserved more. Mm-hmm. And 
he gave me feedback but it wasn't the feedback that i was expecting oh, yeah, so I yeah i i just like I, I i wanted to keep fighting at first but you know what i just stopped but what that thing did to me was it sort of affected my confidence because yeah. i felt like if i had worked so hard on something and i didn't get the result i wanted to get what's the point and what yeah. what would my future look like in the tech industry given yeah. that it's so competitive yeah. and i remember like i broke down i was crying yeah. i called my friend and i was just like i'm not doing again <laughs> like <laughs> not doing again so just know this we are coming for a master just know there will be a lot of i'm not doing again i'm not doing again. <laughs> oh my god i was like you know what i already have a degree in engineering maybe i should just go and be looking for a job as a chemical engineer mm -hmm. now, what are the chances i will make it yeah you know yeah. and i remember you know again community yeah. like i had friends that were like yeah. tell me no like look at all the you know things you know they reminded me about all of the other things that i've yeah, done, done so well mm -hmm. and this one setback should not should and not now be well, everything, everything. so yeah, yeah yeah that was it yeah, that's, that's really interesting how you said it so it means that if there's any advice if you're coming to do a master's in the uk make sure you have a bag of tissue because there'll be a lot of crying i i can't keep up anymore i'm no longer doing this that's it i'm done <laughs> You will That's give it. up many you times. Will give up many times, but the righteous man falls how many times? Seven times. It keeps on going. It keeps on going. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. So my next question would be: um, If you had to go back in time to your first day in the UK, mm -hmm. what advice would you give yourself? This is like literally your first day landing here. Yeah. Did you come through London or Birmingham Airport? <laughs> London. No, <laughs> your first day. You know I how? would say like. I don't know. I feel like everything I have done so far, mm. you know, there's not anything that I've done that I regret. Yeah. I think I will still tell myself, like, the way you came so determined and yeah. so positive. Like, I came to this country with so much positivity mm -hmm. that I nobody could convince me that things will not work out. That's good. Do you know? Like, yeah. I knew things were bleak. Things didn't look like, you know, it will turn out well mm -hmm. but i had just convinced myself within me that things will work out yeah. so i would say again like yeah, if i was yeah. going to give myself another advice yeah. i would say just remain hopeful and positive yeah. as you, you, you were from the very beginning see don't don't allow people's like negative stories to define your own reality True. like it doesn't mean that it has happened to somebody that it also happened to you mm -hmm. if it happens eventually fine but don't come with a defeated mindset True. come with a positive mindset that yeah. everything will be fine and, and all things will possible. exactly yeah. and anything yeah. is possible that's really beautiful because with the mind right you can only get what you think about i know we're standing yeah. this question but it's yeah. just really <laughs> so my next question with would be what's one hilarious call shock, shock sorry i mean i'm a worried girl <laughs> hilarious culture culture shock, shock. <laughs> culture Sha, what is it shock you passed that you never forget <laughs> What shocked oh you my most God. And never ever forget? Okay, maybe I'll mention two things. Hmm. Um, I think it's like how approachable the lecturers are. Oh my God. Like, I remember... You lag lecturers <laughs> are, not, are not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but then we get out of this place. Like, I swear. You know, I remember how like, you know from Nigeria, like anywhere that's older than you, you use the mister or yeah. you... Yeah. But here, like, if you do that, they'll be looking at you like, what's I'm wrong okay. with you? Are you okay? <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> or you're calling them by like mr they yeah. say no my name is liam mm -hmm. or my name is like don't call mm -hmm. oh no don't don't do that mm -hmm. and then maybe another one too is like somebody will be asking you a question um do you want to bring the bag no like why are you putting no at the back yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, understand. Yeah. like no what me i know is do you want to bring do you want to give me the bag yeah. they'll say do you want to bring me the bag no, no. <laughs> but what, was there any culture shock with the food you know Ooh, okay so personally i'm a very picky eater so I, I, <laughs> you are not lying <laughs> Amala and rice. so anytime i go for like their events i just look for something that is very similar to what i like something similar to amala no no <laughs> okay let me give an example let me give an example if they have like um sandwich i'll look for sandwich that has either chicken or yeah, beef yeah i you beef. won't you won't see me where there's okay, pork or nah, cheese or um, uh, uh. Funny, so funny it might not be ex the exact same thing as nigerian food but mm -hmm. it might have like similarities mm -hmm. uh -huh. so that's yeah. what i stick yeah. to or if there's no similarities i just you drink, drink water. my water <laughs> <laughs> you drink water you drink water syndrome in nigeria everybody saying ah 
Jack, 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 go to this school, go to that school. Sometimes yeah. you don't even know the cause. Which one? Yeah, yeah. I'm lucky enough to even say, oh, I did engineering, but now I want to do something. Some people mm-hmm. just say, what's the next one? Like, yeah, let's go, let's go. <laughs> yes. All to leave the country, right? Yeah. So, what is the one thing you feel like British universities don't tell international students before they move over? What's yeah. the one thing they don't tell you? Okay, so I will be honest. They don't tell you how hard it's going to be, especially if you are doing a course that is a bit different from what you've done before. Mm-hmm. So my course was sold as a master's conversion course. So that means that they know that people that don't necessarily have experience in tech will yeah. be applying for it. Yeah. And that was how they sold it to us. Yeah. But on getting here, <laughs> <laughs> it was not yeah it was not as easy yeah. as they like sold it out to be mm-hmm. um and you know what at the end of the day i feel like they also tried their best mm-hmm. to provide as many resources as they could to help us yeah. so if you were someone that was ready to sit down and actually read and work hard mm-hmm. you figure it out yeah. so yeah, yeah that's yeah. just that, that, that's really interesting what I is the that... most unexpected way your life has changed since moving to the uk oh my god you okay used to the code now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yes that's one but another thing i would say is that when i was in nigeria I, because like i was in my comfort zone yeah i didn't put myself out there as mm-hmm. much mm-hmm. but because i was in a strange land and i knew <laughs> if i if i hide myself <laughs> nobody, will see, nobody will see me so one of the things that has really changed in my life is personal branding yeah. i took my personal branding so seriously yeah. and i fought um, introvertedness so hard wow. so i'm now i had to force myself to be a confident person mm-hmm. i had to force myself to be out there and yeah. put myself out yeah. there and it has really just brought a lot of opportunities mm-hmm. my way my mm-hmm. first job in the uk was as a result of a diary that i was you know putting out there every week on my yeah. linkedin yeah. i think my my boss at the yeah. time yeah. like my boss that would eventually hire me mm-hmm. was reading my diary and yeah. he just really liked it i would document there how i was job hunting how mm-hmm. classes were going mm-hmm. you know and i remember when i resumed he kept like telling everybody that oh temi has a diary on yeah. on linkedin that she writes on <laughs> yeah. every week yeah. so honestly yeah i would say personal branding was one thing that has really like changed in my life mm-hmm. and i've just been so much i, I mean I'm now a much more confident person. person. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Because it's very easy for people to come here. Again, it's just really who you listen to when yeah. you come here. And they're like, ah, don't put your leg outside, though. just hide mm. yourself. You know, yeah. you're yeah. Don't yeah. bring things so yeah. people will see you. And then, yeah, you know, exactly. And then for someone like you that at home, you just do your own thing. You yeah. just come. You just want to recite it. Yeah. Home. But this one, yeah. you came out and obviously you turned out to work at yeah. work for you. So, note this if you're coming to the UK, <laughs> just know you need to. You need to be confident more yeah. than you were in Nigeria. Not in yeah. an arrogant way, of exactly. course, right? I mean, or, listen to people that have yeah. opinion, but be very confident and put yourself out there because a closed mouth is a is closed it cl- destiny. Is it closed what is the biggest lie people believe about studying in the UK? Oh, this one. They, you know how people used to say if you're a third class student in Nigeria, when you come to UK, you'll be a first class student. Nah, lie, yo. Nah, if you know not work hard, <laughs> you go still become the third class <laughs> Even worse, and here, you see this you're, you're going to depend on your like postgraduate visa. Yes, it's yes, worse, and yeah. and and like one thing I would say is like in Nigeria, passing is highly dependent on what you can cram and remember. Mm-hmm. But here, <laughs> here, if you don't know it, you don't know it. Too. They 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 test what you know, mm-hmm. not what you have crammed, mm-hmm. what you understand. Mm-hmm. So if you don't understand what you are being taught in class you Don't can't be. pass yeah. so yeah that's one lie that i would say hmm it's not true you if you don't work hard here too you don't go pass for school <laughs> <laughs> if you had to survive in the uk with mm-hmm. just 100 pounds for a month mm-hmm. how would you do it I, I sure did that when I first was came. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say like I I stuck to as that branded products. Mm-hmm. So when you go to like these stores, mm-hmm. you will see like these stores produce their own stuff. You see that they have their own tissue, mm-hmm. their own chicken, mm-hmm. their own like brand. So mm-hmm. those ones are much more cheaper than yeah. like other brands yeah, that they true, sell in true. store. So I would say like I will stick to the like stores branded products mm-hmm. and yeah you you'll be fine you'll be fine <laughs> as always you'll be fine but thank yeah. you so much for being in this video what would be your final word to anybody in, you know looking for something more because from your entire story it will be you know something more 
we were working in Nigeria, you felt like that wasn't good enough. You mm -hmm. wanted something more. Yeah. And you decided to take that leap of faith. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you did it, but I'm not sure you had your own 16K, school fees yeah. in your bank when you were coming. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody looking to do something more? Maybe yeah. they have the dream to study abroad, yeah. get a PhD, get even scholarship. Yeah. What would you say to them? So I would say start from where you are. Um, like she said, it wasn't like everything was set in stone or I had every single thing that I wanted, mm -hmm. but I kept starting from where I was. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the little, for instance now, when I started, I didn't exactly have all of the money, but mm -hmm. the first step I could do was, okay, let me start looking for the schools that I yeah, wanted. Yeah. Or what was, what's the course I want to study? Mm -hmm. What are the schools available that are having those um, yeah, those courses? courses yeah. How much is the money? Yeah. Let's look at, okay, what is the cheapest available option? You can't keep saying, oh, the, the money is not there. Oh, I don't know who is going to help me. And you're not taking any step. Yeah. See, the Bible says that God blesses the works of our hands. Yep. Yep. If there is no work that you have done, there's no, there is no way he can bless you. Sure. So you just need to take that first step. Mm -hmm. And as you go, you know, the Lord will open ways and, you know, help you through it. That's, so that's for sure. That's what I was saying. <laughs> I'm a video. <laughs> I'm a video as brought in the gold factor. So you will know that this distinction between here is not by mistake. It's because of God. It's oh God my God. God but yeah, thank you so much for yeah. coming in, sharing your experience. It was really lovely really to be here. That. Thank you for and also you watching this video. Thank you for watching. Um, you get to see more of this style of videos on my channel more, mm -hmm. where we interview more people. So feel free to tell me in the comment section if you want me to interview someone else that got a distinction or someone else living in the UK. Just anything. Feel free to tell me what kind of interviews you want to see more. And please like, comment, and engage, subscribe. and subscribe to the channel, please, so that the algorithm <laughs> can keep pushing the video to back. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye. Bye.